Any child who wants to become a professional racing driver has a rather long and unlikely road. First, you need the opportunity. Can your family afford it? Then you need the talent. Are you even competitive? But what if there was an extra caveat? In the place which you live, motor racing, in nearly all forms, has been banned since the mid-20th century. That is the extra challenge of any would-be driver who was born in the country of Switzerland post-1955. Even with that in mind, the country has still produced some successful drivers for the international stage. So, for someone born here, the path to become a Formula 1 driver, Formula E champion, two-time world endurance champion, and four-time overall winner of the 24 Hours of Le Mans must have a unique background and a special degree of perseverance. So today, we read into the story of none other than Sebastian Buemi. Sebastian Olivier Buemi was born on the 31st of October 1988 and lived and grew up in the town of Egla in the Swiss Confederation. Of course, as previously mentioned, motorsports were illegal here at this time, so where did his early interest in motorsports come from? Well, it roughly starts in the year 1959 with Sebastian's grandfather George Gosnong and his brother Claude Gosnong. These brothers were mechanics and racing enthusiasts living in the city of Egla. The pair had a passion for racing and made cars for competition outside of the country. George was the driver while Claude mainly remained in the role of mechanic, but together they were racing grand touring cars at tracks like Spa, Monza, and even the Nürburgring. They would establish themselves with their business Claude et George Gachnong Egla, or Sega for short. And in 1960, George would drive in the 24 hours of Le Mans in their rebuilt Sega Ferrari 250. From 1959 to 1967, the Gosnong Garage would build 12 different cars, including two attempts at building a Formula One car. But these cars would be mostly raced by George at races in other countries and hill climb events. After lacking financial resources, a dangerous car crash, and starting a family, George agreed to hang up the gloves and instead opened an auto garage and became a Toyota dealer in 1971. He had two children, a son named Olivier and a daughter named Veronica. Veronica Gachnong would give birth to Sebastian after meeting his father, Antoine Buemi. Both of Sebastian's parents had an interest in motorsports and were involved in the business of automobiles. Antoine Buemi would go on to become director at another garage and dealership across town that now sells Volkswagens. Sebastian's parents introduced him to racing and had him surrounded by cars growing up in a dealership. They got him his first go-kart and helped to support him throughout the early years. His father played kart mechanic and the whole family would go on trips out of the country to be able to compete at higher levels. They supported Sebastian as best they could throughout karting and into the early echelons of single-seater racing. However, by this time, the level of competition became far too expensive for their family to be able to support, and Sebastian would need a lifeline if he wanted to continue his career. But before we get to that point in his career, let's start back at the beginning. As previously mentioned, Sebastian grew up in a family who sold cars, worked on cars, and used to race and build cars. For a country where racing was illegal, they were as automotively focused as they could be. When he was just five years old, his parents got him his first go-kart for Christmas. Within the next few days, he was driving it all around the family's dealership. Seb says from this point on, he can never remember his life without racing. Slowly over time, the dream became Formula One. He can remember waking up early on Sundays to watch it with his father. It was something they really bonded over, and probably because he didn't know how unrealistic it was, he wanted to become an F1 driver someday. Before that day, his earliest competitor came in the form of his cousin. The one-year-older daughter of his uncle Olivier was Natasha Gachnong. Her family, too, was into the car dealership business and the hobby of motorsports. Much of their young go-kart practice was spent racing each other around the family compounds. Being slightly older, she was the first one to go into competitive racing. Sebastian said his father is never the type of person to just do something for the sake of simply just doing it, and after a couple of years of Seb driving his cart around the dealership, they decided to go and find some racing. Originally, this idea was contested by his grandfather who had lost many friends while competing in racing, and still thought it was too dangerous. He would eventually come around to support his grandchildren, however. While motorsports were banned in the country, there were still a few local and national karting leagues available for the young to compete. Seb says he started karting around the age of 7, and for the first year, he was pretty sure he didn't win any races. Most of the people he was racing against were at least age 10, and in addition, his father still needed to learn all the tricks to being a kart mechanic. It was in his second year where he started to be victorious. 
At the age of 8, he qualified for the Swiss Championship and would go on to win the championship. Upon winning, his father asked him what he would like as a reward, and Buemi says, believe it or not, he asked for a watch. It was a good thing Seb had a watch, because the bells of time were about to toll for the competition. Because over the next five years, he would go on to win the Swiss Karting Championship in 1998, 99, and 2000, second in 2001, and first again in 2002. In addition, he would win the Kia Karting Cup in 1999 and 2000, and the Bridgestone Cup in 2001. It was after this where his family realized if Seb had hoped to continue with his successful racing career, he would need a stage bigger than what was available in Switzerland. In the next year, the family would spend a lot of time together sleeping in caravans outside of racetracks as they would be traveling around Europe and especially Italy. In 2002, he would finish second in the Trofeo Andrea Marguti and runner-up in the Italian Open Masters behind Nico Hülkenberg. But he would win the European Junior Championship beating people like Nico, his cousin Natasha, and Alexander Sims. The next year would see Buemi finishing fourth in the FIA European Junior Championship, but winning the Italian Open Masters. According to Driver Database, he beat such names like Stefano Coletti, Miguel Molina, and the infamous Andy, just to name a few. At this point in time, Sebastian's father Antoine was still at the head of helping him make his decisions on where to take his career. They knew if he wanted to make his dream of Formula One, he would need to start racing in cars, and soon. Unfortunately, the family did not have enough money to support a career in single-seaters. A year earlier, Seb's cousin Natasha had made the transition to racing Formula BMW, and the Buemis agreed that this could be the next step. So, at the end of 2003, at age 15, he would take part in the BMW Scholarship Program. He would be considered worthy and would be granted some financial support in order to compete in the Formula BMW Series in 2004. His family would put in the rest of the money required to make the series this year, but their son would need to find the way to get the attention of a supporter if he wanted to continue. The year went pretty well. Seb would finish the championship in his rookie year third in the final standings with two poles, two fastest laps, and ten podiums. Unfortunately for Seb, the championship was dominated by another Seb in his second year in the series. Sebastian Vettel won 18 out of 20 races, not leaving much for the others to win. His good performances in his rookie year did get Buemi the attention of Helmut Marko, who signed him to a five-year contract with Red Bull. This meant Buemi would return in 2005. But before 2005 began, Buemi did get a small taste of F1. His sponsor relation with Tag Heuer put him in the seat of a 1999 Aeros A20 for a filming day. Seb said it was an incredible experience that really motivated him to be sure he would get behind the wheel of a Formula 1 car again. The year 2005 would prove to be a helpful step on his way to Formula 1. With the Red Bull support, he was promoted to fill the vacant seat left by Sebastian Vettel. He would go on to win 7 races and get 16 podiums and 7 poles in just 20 races. However, the championship was a close fight between himself and Nico Hülkenberg that came down to the last weekend. On the Saturday race, both Seb and Nico were giving a time penalty due to safety car infractions. Buemi's was appealed, he won the race and the championship. Nico went on to win the Sunday event and Buemi finished third. However, a second appeal was launched in regard to Seb's driving from the Saturday race. In response, Seb was given a larger penalty that saw him losing many places and points in the finishing order, giving the championship win to Hülkenberg. He describes this as one of the most unhappy moments in his career. The year 2006 would see Seb participating in partial schedules in the Formula Renault 2.0 Euro Cup and Northern European Cup Championships, where in limited starts he would get victories in both. The majority of his focus was set on Formula 3 machinery, where he would finish 4th in the Macau Grand Prix, 3rd in the Masters of Formula 3, and would get 3 podiums and 1 victory in his rookie season, ultimately finishing 1 point behind his teammate and tied for 11th in the Formula 3 Euro Series. In 2007, Buemi finished 2nd in the Formula 3 Euro Series with 3 wins, 13 podiums, and 2 poles behind Romain Grosjean. When time allowed, he was called in as a fill-in to participate in A1GP events for his country of Switzerland. In addition, he was called into GP2 to fill in for Michael Amundmuller, who had broken his wrist, for the round at Monaco. Seb had never been to Monaco, but he was second fastest in first practice, qualified on the second row of the grid, and finished in the points. He would come back later in the year to do 10 more races for the ART Grand Prix team. Maybe most importantly, in July of this year, Sebastian had his first proper F1 test for Red Bull at Jerez. 
Moving into the year 2008, Buemi was a test driver for both the Red Bull and Toro Rosso F1 teams. He finished 2nd in the GP2 Asia series, and 6th with 2 wins and 5 podiums in the GP2 series. As a result of consistently being fastest in testing, when it came time to fill Sebastian Vettel's seat at Toro Rosso and potentially Sebastian Bourdais' seat as well in 2009, there was a final set of tests conducted between Bourdais, Buemi, and Takuma Sato. It was pretty well decided that Buemi would be taking over for Vettel, and his teammate would to be determined between Bourdais and Sato. Some people question if Buemi was truly at a level to be in Formula 1 since his junior career hadn't produced a championship since karting, and Buemi had had a history of making some questionably aggressive moves on track, but Red Bull believed in their driver. Seb's F1 debut would happen at Melbourne in 2009, and he would just be knocked out of qualifying in Q1, but would outqualify Team McBourday. During the race, he would make his way up to finishing 8th on the road, but after Lewis Hamilton's car was disqualified, he would be promoted to 7th. He had scored points on debut and was the first Swiss to score points since 1985. The rest of the year would see him finishing in the points 4 more times for a total of 6 points. He has also recently revealed that during that year he was in talks with the Toyota Formula 1 team to join for the next season. His deal was pretty close to being worked out until Toyota decided to drop out of the series. Instead, he would return with Toro Rosso for 2010, getting another 4 points finishes for a total of 8 points, this being the first year when they changed the points format to the top 10 finishers. In the next year of 2011 would see Boemi's best performance so far with 7 points finishes for 15 points. However, maybe better than that was a run of performance to the end of the year that saw him running consistently inside the top 10, but nearly 3 races in a row would end up in mechanical failures robbing him of points. Sebastian said it sucked, but he wasn't terribly upset by it because he was expecting a return in 2012. However, a change of plans with Toro Rosso saw him being dropped from the team. Franz Toss citing the team being a rookie training school, and their current drivers no longer filled that role. Buemi was retained by Red Bull to still serve as a reserve and test driver. Many drivers who are kicked from F1 tend to struggle to revitalize their careers. But for Buemi, it is almost where his really began. For the 2012 year, he contacted the people he knew at Toyota Motorsports and said he wanted to be part of their new World Endurance program. He was hired nearly immediately to fill the second car being brought to that year's Le Mans event. He ran a few other WEC events and remained committed to his role at Red Bull being happy to feel like an integral part of the team's dominance with Vettel. Coming to the next year, Buemi was one of the main drivers in the Toyota WEC program. Over the next decade, it would provide Sebastian and Toyota with four 24 hours of Le Mans overall wins and a further three overall non-winning podiums, accolades that did not come without frustration and heartbreak. In his first year, his team car finished third in the overall championship, and since then he has been the victor twice and runner-up three times. In addition to the resurgence in WEC, Buemi joined the fresh Formula E racing series on its debut. He went there searching to rekindle an old friendship with the dam's team owner he had developed in the early 2000s. In his time in Formula E, he's won the championship once, which arguably should have been twice, save not for conflicting WEC commitments. Also, he currently holds the record for the most wins in the series history, as well as the most wins in a single season. A return to F1 seems rather unlikely for Sebastian at this point, even though he still is the reserve driver for Red Bull, but he says that's okay. A Formula 1 car drives like nothing else, but unless you are in a winning team, it can become a bit monotonous, constantly fighting to just be midfield. He's content in Formula E, where the competition is nearly equal, and in the WEC, where the high-speed multi-class overtaking is unique. And for someone coming from a country where motorsports was mostly banned, he's doing pretty well. So obviously this video was about Sebastian Buemi, and my last video was about Sebastian Bourdais, so I think for my next video I'm going to go ahead and complete the Red Bull Triple. So thanks again for watching. I'm hoping my videos are getting a little bit better. So if you've seen multiple, let me know what you think with a nice comment. And if there's anything in particular that annoys you that I think I could specifically improve on, let me know that as well. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time on Driver Profiles.